G'day, I'm Patrick from Douglas Fur Design. Welcome to the Router Bits. There's a whole bunch of different types of flush trim bits. They're a really useful bit and they're also really versatile, but sometimes they can be a bit confusing because there are so many varieties. Uh, I've picked out five that I think are really useful and give you kind of the full gamut of uses that you can get out of the flush trim bit family. We're going to look at uh, two small quarter inch flush trim bits. We have a quarter inch flush trim bit with a V-groove, which is a really nice little feature. I have a large half inch heavy duty flush trim bit, which you can use to make some large components. And the other one I have is a pattern following bit, which you can use to plunge. So with those five bits, you'll be able to do a whole bunch of jobs that you might not have the capability to do already. Uh, and I think they'll get you out of a lot of trouble. So the first little router bit that I'm gonna look at is a very small quarter inch flush trim bit. It has the bearing on the top. It's only about eight mils thick and about 12 mil long. So perfect for really fine work. I'm actually gonna make some really tiny coasters. I've got some thin Oregon, I've made a perfectly round template that I'm gonna to use to follow with the bearing. And then the actual blades will be trimming my little discs so that they're perfectly smooth and round. You could also use this for trimming laminate or any other really nice fine work. I just like it because it's not huge. I can set it really easily. Very handy little bit. I'll be sticking my template to my rough cut discs, which I've just run through the bandsaw with some double sided tape easy to, to take on and off but it holds it down firmly enough so that I can actually do my routing operation safely and I just have this down on a piece of rubber which means these things won't slide around too much when I'm routing. So I'm going to stick one of these on now and route them out and you'll see how nice and smooth those edges are. So that bit makes a really nice smooth edge all the way around on these fine pieces of timber. You can obviously do any shape you like. So this could be for any sort of decoration, it doesn't have to be a circle. You just have to make sure that your template is nice and smooth. And that's it. The second little flush trim bit that I wanna look at, it's a little bit larger than the last one we looked at. It's actually 12 mil, 12.5 mil in diameter and about one inch long, 25 mil. This is another really handy little bit. What I'm going to show to demonstrate this bit is actually trimming a hardwood face to match up with a cabinet. This is a really common use for a, a flush trimming bit like this. Often it's uh, not practical or not economical to make an entire cabinet out of solid timber. So you'll put a hardwood face as I have on this. This is an MDF carcass with a Tassie oak um, bead around the front. And the Tasmanian oak actually overhangs the MDF slightly. I can, it's enough so that I can feel it and I want it to be perfectly in line. And that's what this flush trim bit will do. The bearing itself will run along the MDF and it'll, the blade will bring the level of this hardwood face back to exactly the same level as the MDF. Dead simple to use, really common application. This can be applied to lots of other projects as well, but this is one really common use for this type of bit. So I ran my router around the outside and the inside. They're both perfectly smooth and that gives you the kind of result that you need if you want to put a nice timber face on your cabinet work or some drawers or shelves or whatever that application might be. The next bit I'm going to run through is a V-groove flush trimming bit. It is a standard flush trimming bit with a little V feature just below the bearing and it is fantastic for giving a really nice sharp shadow line usually placed directly on the join of two pieces of timber. So one way you might use that 
is instead of just uh, trimming this front hardwood face so that it's flush with the cabinet, you could actually put a really nice shadow line between the hardwood and the face. That might just separate it visually. It can look really nice and sharp. It can also be used really effectively if your join is just a little bit messy or they haven't come together quite as tight as you needed. Putting a shadow line in there totally hides that join. It can be a really good feature. The blade is long enough to do up to a 30 mil uh, face material. I've set it to just do 19 because my uh, hardwood face here is only 19 mil. So you set the depth accordingly, run it all the way around and uh, very handy, very nice sharp feature. The next bit that I want to show you is called a pattern following bit. You'll notice that unlike the other bits that we've been using, the bearing is actually close to the shank rather than right on the tip. Uh, and I'm obviously using this in a larger router because it's a half inch shank rather than a quarter inch shank. Now, these are super useful for all kinds of projects. They can obviously be used in a router table as well, but what I'm gonna show you today is the process for cutting out a really nice clean hole like you might do in a countertop to fit a sink or a stove or some other kind of application. This bit can actually be used as a plunge bit because it does have blades on the tip as well as down the sides. I'm not gonna be truly plunging it through this piece of plywood because I've rough cut most of the material out using a, uh, a jigsaw. But if you needed to, the bit does give you that flexibility as well. So I've marked out on my countertop, I'm working from the underside so that the, uh, the top side, my good side will stay clean. I've marked out the size of my small sink that's gonna go in here. Now, I'm just gonna use some scrap pieces of plywood for my template. I'm gonna nail them on. That's why I'm working from the underside so that my little nail holes aren't gonna be affecting the nice uh, top surface that I wanna retain. I'm, because I'm actually gonna be following this piece with the bearing, this edge can line up exactly with the line that I wanna cut. So I'm just gonna line them up, hammer them down on all four of them, and then I can use this router bit to clean up the edge of that hole and make it really nice and smooth. Dead simple, plenty of other applications for a nice bit like this. It can be used just as a straight bit, but the bearing just adds a whole bunch of functionality to it as well. Okay, so that bit did a fantastic job. We have a really nice smooth cutout here. This material was only 19 mil thick though, so this bit that we were just using can go up to 35 mil. But if you're trying to do this process on a really thick piece of cabinetry, or even if you're trying to trim up the edge of a table, you can also use this last bit, which I'm gonna demonstrate. This is a heavy duty flush trimming bit and it gives you a height of actually about 55 millimeters of blade depth. So you can use this on a huge thick pieces of timber. The use that I'm actually gonna demonstrate with this is slightly different. I have to create a number of these matching components for a coffee table that I'm building. They're out of 45 mil thick solid black butt. They're really tough. It's a really hard recycled timber. And I've also got these interesting curves that I have to cut out. So this is a really tricky shape to cut out on any other machine because no other machine can get a nice cutout inside the ends of a piece of timber like this. A router does a fantastic job. In order to make these components, I want them all to match obviously. So first I'm gonna to have to make a template. And I've just cut this out of a piece of pine. I drew the line that I wanted really carefully and I cut that line exactly out on the bandsaw and then I smoothed that out really well with sandpaper so that it actually feels smooth. And it's really important that you don't have any roughness on this because that roughness will carry on to every single other piece that you create using this template. So the way that we're going to use this is actually in a router table. You could do it in a handheld router but I'd prefer to do this in a router table because the bit is so big. We're gonna stick our template onto our piece of timber that we wanna actually cut out. We're gonna use that template to trace a line 
which I have done on here. And then we're gonna rough cut that material out with a bandsaw or a jigsaw or a handsaw or whatever you have. Just make sure you leave a millimeter or so away from the line. You don't wanna cut past it. And so once we've rough cut this out, then we can stick our template on back onto that line that we drew. And again, just use some double-sided tape. It seems to be the best option. And then we can use this to run the bearing on this router bit to get a perfect copy. Now you'll notice with this router bit, it actually has a bearing on the top and the bottom. And what this allows you to do is actually use your template on the bottom or the top of the piece. And why that's really important, especially with components like this, is that as you cut the, these curves, it's really important to notice which direction the grain is going because if you're trying to cut up, up the hill into the grain, you'll end up tearing out a lot of this material. Whereas cutting down the hill, you're actually cutting with the grain, so it's working quite well. So what this allows you to do is pass that downhill section over on the router table this way, then flip it over, and now the bearing will be on the bottom of the set of this, and it means you're also cutting downhill again. Now this will become a little bit clearer when I'm demonstrating, but it's a really important principle when you're cutting curves that cross down the grain and then back up again. Another really important thing about this heavy duty flush trimming bit is it actually has three blades rather than two, which just gives you a lot more blade surface area and a lot more blade contact with the timber. And these blades are also skewed rather than being straight in the axis of the shank. And that means that the blade is actually contacting the timber on a helical uh, pattern rather than just whacking it in, whacking a full blade length into the timber at one time. It's a really similar principle to uh, using your hand plane on a slight angle or using a helical head on a planer. It does a really similar job and that's the reason that we've got these set at an angle. You'll get a really nice smooth cut even on big, chunky, heavy timbers like this. So the first process that we need to do is you need to make sure that this bearing is sitting on at the height of your guide and that all of this bottom piece of timber will come in contact with the blade and not the bearing itself. So the bearing should be touching the top template, the blade should be touching the work piece. So we'll be doing the first pass down the hill, so this first little section, then just right into the middle here somewhere and we don't want to start going back up the hill. So we go through to the centre, then we're going to flip it over, we're going to uh, raise this blade so that the bottom bearing is now in contact with our template again and the blade is in contact with all of our workpiece. And then again, we'll go down the hill to meet in the middle where we've already passed over from the other direction. So that's the process. The reason that we're doing that is that we're not getting a whole bunch of tear out as the blade is tearing up against the grain direction here. That's really important. On certain timbers, you might be able to go against the grain, but certainly with this, it's just gonna tear out all over the place. So I've knocked off my little template piece here that's ready to use on the next piece. I've got really nice clean faces, even though we've essentially done two end grain cuts and what would have been against the grain. That flipping over method is one of the really great reasons to have two bearings on a massive piece like this. You just wouldn't be able to get results this good any other way. There's obviously many more ways that these can be used. I just wanted to show you a few of the ways that I commonly use these flush trimming bits and why you need the different sizes. You can pick up any one of these router bits individually from Timbercon, but for convenience, we've also just put them together for you in a kit. So you don't have to go through and choose the individual bits that you want. As always, you can pick these up online if you prefer at timbercon.com.au or if you're nearby Perth or Melbourne stores, go in store and you can grab them individually or as the kit. 